Hi, Keith here from Orthocast by Keith. And just the other day, a patient shared a story with me that while she was visiting her doctor up north, she's a snowbird, that they were, he was definitely impressed with the way the toe plate on her short leg cast looked that we did at our clinic. And just happen, so happens that coincides with a request I have about the way we do toe plates with our short legs. So today, I'm going to do a short leg cast with a toe plate. So the supplies we're going to need, the uh, stockinette from a good 3-4 inches beyond the toes up to the knee, 3 inches of 4 inch, 3 rolls of 4 inch fiberglass, 2 rolls of 3 inch fiberglass for the final cover, of course your gloves, your padding, fiberglass scissors, bandage scissors, and small scissors for any trimming after the fact with the fiberglass that you want to get rid of. Tape definitely comes in handy for the edges. Of course, you're going to need a cast saw for the trimming around the edges and the toes. Spreaders. Uh, I use medical chucks for to catch the mess, and I tape under my thigh. If you've ever seen one of the other videos, that I will balance a foot on there to prevent the patient from dropping their foot into plantar flexion, possibly causing a wrinkle or a problem with the cast. And don't forget that bucket of water. So, like with any other short leg. What you want to do is capture the position first. So you're going to rest around the foot stand. And the reason for that is if you wrap in plantar flexion or let their toes relax, because when you ask the patient to hold their foot, if they get tired, they're going to drop. And then when you bring it up later, it puts much unnecessary pressure right here. Especially after the padding or after the fiberglass, it really increases the pressure. So like I was taught, and I totally agree with it, Capture the position. Get them in their position first and then wrap the cast. Your stockinette will come two, three, four inches beyond the toes. Plenty is fine. And above the knee, your parameters are going to be definitely one to two inches beyond the toes. And with any standard short leg cast, the fiberglass will end two to three fingers below the fibular head. And a lot of uh, places will teach you right at the tibial tuberosity. And that is because if you bring it around, you will avoid wrapping and getting too close and causing damage to the nerve and artery that circumferences the fibular head. So, patient up and over. Try to get them comfortable to where they can tolerate the foot stand under there for it's going to be about 10-15 minutes and you watch if you lie in your second toe with your kneecap the ASIS you are anatomically straight this way and I warn people when I get to work with new people constantly throughout the wrapping your cast look to the side look to the side make sure you still have that ankle at 90 degrees if this starts to pain them they'll start to push down and lift their foot off the metal and they will plantar flex the foot and lift themselves out of 90 and you've just lost the cast you may have to redo it and I got news for you it's your fault not theirs constantly keep an eye on your patient the overlap we have here get rid of it a slight overlap is fine but a fold when it changes directions and comes back on itself that is unnecessary pressure we don't want that so an overlap is fine but a fold is not that's a crease that pushes on their skin so get rid of that the padding I start at the forefoot come out beyond the toes and then back if I start at the toes sometimes it'll just angle and it's hard to keep things flat so I come once around the forefoot to anchor it, and then I'll bring it out, and I will pinch this to keep it flat so you don't have wobbles or wrinkles or we call whoop de doos underneath the cast. Because the bottom of that has to stay flat as possible. Otherwise, it's uncomfortable, there's wrinkles in there, and the patient will feel it. And you may end up having to redo your cast. A slight tension with your padding. When you come here, if you don't want it there, pull it out of there. Because you're going to be coming through this dorsum of the cast a couple times when you come around the heel. So by all means, reduce that buildup of pressure and padding by taking some of the padding out of there. 
If you have a tuft or a wrinkle in the back, anchor below it and get rid of it. And sliding for her, checking, making sure she's still at 90. And up the leg with 50 to 60% overlap. And a slight tension. The padding is what determines how tight your cast is going to be. We never pull the fiberglass or the plaster, and it will go around an extra time at the top for the cuff. Check to see that there's enough padding on the heel of the Achilles. If you want to add more, add patches. Don't keep wrapping around and around and increasing the padding there. Over padding sounds like a good idea, sounds comfortable, but if you have a reduction or a surgery, too much padding actually will allow that to move in there. And the cast will loosen up sooner, causing rubbing, shearing on the ankle and the heel area. So minimal padding and patches in the troubled areas if you need them. What I often show patients is the cotton will tear if pulled too tight. So this is a slight stretch that offers plenty of tension for how tight the cast will be. And like I said, the casting tape lays on the foot. We never pull the cast tape. I prefer to double glove. So I pull the first set of gloves off after the first layer of fiberglass. So I can work with the edges with gloves that aren't sticky from the fiberglass resin. On an adult foot, I will use three rolls of four inch fiberglass. Because weight bearing or not, I will still always reinforce the bottom of a cast just in case the patient loses their balance. It's non-compliant, hopefully not. Or balancing in the bathroom. Just make sure the cast is strong enough to hold up to an accident so as not to jeopardize the injury of the surgery. Bucket of tepid water, warm. If you need more time with your cast, cool down the water, it'll offer you more time. Three squeezes underwater, one squeeze on top, and lay the cotton down. As I come around, I will push under the bottom to try and keep that fiberglass flat. I will hold that edge there to try and keep it flat. Whatever you can do, brace it with the thumb. Wrinkles under there. You'd hate to have to redo an entire cast just because your toe plate has a bunch of wrinkles in it. All right. I like to have the fiberglass in the dorsum here. I try to avoid an edge here. It's just a personal preference of mine. I think it's a little more comfortable for the patient. Yeah. Sometimes you have to let the fiberglass guide you. Sometimes you can guide the fiberglass. And if you have a, I just felt a tuft back there, you grab your scissors, cut through that. And lay it flat. Continue up the leg, keeping it in contact. Leave a good half to one inch of padding at the top for it to fold over for a soft edge against the patient's skin. And with what leftover tape, by all means, feel free to go back down the leg to increase its thickness and strength. Laminate briefly, still check on the position of the leg. And then I will place my thumbs inside here and stretch out that toe plate. Again, to try and reconfirm that there are no wrinkles on the bottom of that. Now when you reinforce the toe plate underneath it, 
You can fan fold from heel to toe if you like. Is just I'm not very good at that, so I will take some excess and I will go back and forth. The palm of my hand. Five, six, seven, eight. I like eight layers under my toe plate. Bring it to the end. And then attach that with one wrap around. And pinching the sides with an overlap of what I just put there. I'll go four more. I don't reinforce the arch of the foot. This patient can't walk on their arch. I'll go straight down to the heel to reinforce it. And that laminated a little bit. And then while it's still pliable, making sure to ask the patient, don't lift up their foot, don't help me. Slide the foot stand out of the cast and finish laminating. Put an arch mold in it, make sure the Achilles has a mold. And I will set it here so I don't have to worry about the patient plantar flexing. Again, splay that toe box. And do the laminating. off the sticky set of gloves and I'll fold my cotton padding down over the edge. If it feels a little thin, you can add from there across that for a comfortable edge. Now. Okay, so now we're going to trim the top off of the toe plate. The toe plate is for a bumper on the bottom only, mostly used for injuries that are from the ankle, forefoot, and toes. That way the toes can't come over the edge of the cast and pull on all that anatomy. Some doctors, if the injuries from here up, will allow you to come across under the metatarsal heads and just have all the toes free. We have a few doctors that have just, I love this, I want all my casts this way. It's a preference thing with those doctors, but Usually forefoot and toes, that's the main reason why you use a toe box. So, you can put your finger there and feel where the great toe ends and try to guesstimate. I go by the bunion and the bunionette. So if you start at the bunion here and come across in the 17 degrees that your palmar crease and your uh, metatarsal crease has, it comes right at the bunionette, come down the sides, on each side, and that'll be your cut. All right, so let's trim those toes. Alright, now that we have the top off, I'm going to I take and leave a little to fold over the side, a little to fold over the back, and the other side. Now here's where we work on making this a good looking toe plate. I'm going to bring your foot up. I'll take my finger in here and place it right along the rim of her toes. And then on this side is where I'll bring the saw along the tip of my finger. So this way I'm assured that the toe plate is at least one finger's breadth beyond her toes.
And if we peel this back, we have all five toes exposed and you can take this on, trim this back farther. Once you see it, you can make adjustments by there if you want this closer, this farther back. Pull the stock in that forward and make your changes. I'll pull tape and a little tug to pull it. If there's any wrinkle of cloth under the foot, a slight tug with that. And pull this down and out on each side. Make sure there's no wrinkles in there. Pinch it at the bottom. Lay your tape across and capture that. Get rid of your excess right on the other side of the tape. And we're ready for the final layer. Start at the heel, come around those toes, capture it, and I'll do it twice for extra strength at the toe in case it bumps into stuff or if they're using crutches when they drag their foot through their crutches, it's plenty of fiberglass. I'll come across the top of the foot, getting it right there. I don't pull it here, I roll it up to it so it can change direction easily. Hold that with my thumb. Bring it back down and come across and capture that edge and just work my way down the foot. Then I will rest that on my thigh so it stays in place and continue up the foot. This is weight bearing or you have a large person or maybe somebody you're not going to trust with compliancy you might consider starting at the top leaving plenty of cotton showing so the fiberglass doesn't get near the skin work your way down so your overlap is more around the ankle to strengthen and reinforce it reinforce it I like to end all my fiberglass rolls behind the leg, behind the wrist. The patient doesn't see it, it's a little more aesthetically pleasing to them. And with kids, babies, and elders, it's something that they can't reach and pick at easily. And there we are. Okay, so we just finished a short leg with a toe plate. Key points remember, always keep the ankle at 90. Constantly check the side to make sure your patient hasn't shifted on you. Any shifting, any wrinkles in a cast, you basically have to start over. A wrinkle in a cast is like a rock in the bottom of your shoe. You just cannot have it. So, the bunion, the bunionette, your parameters for coming across the metatarsal head. Bringing the fingers I'm resting along the top of the toes for when you cut and trim along the top of the toe plate. I wrap around it twice just in case this hits does hit anything or it gets dragged through the follow through with the crutches. And uh, stocking it and padding a good three, four inches beyond the toes and as well as the fiberglass, two, three, four inches beyond the toes. So you have plenty to trim back on so the toes are well protected.